So what is transitional care? There are various definitions and one of the definitions is that it is uh, movement of patients between healthcare practitioners and settings as their condition and care needs change during the course of a chronic or acute illness. And then er Dr. Eric Coleman was one of the earliest developers of, of this whole concept of transitional care. And so um, his and his colleagues' definition is that uh, Transitional care is a set of actions that is designed to ensure the coordination and continuity of health care as patients transfer between different locations or between different levels of care, for example, from ICU to post-ICU. And uh, so why are we even um, asking this question? Uh, and <laughs> the more I am in research and um, I feel like Questions uh, or topics that are troublesome, that are difficult, that are costly, that are burdensome are all researched. I think we rarely really ask questions about good things. Um, so clearly there are some problems. <laughs> this is why this topic exists. So uh, the, uh, several things and several problems happen during this, what seems to be a really logical, simple, even mundane thing, like if somebody's going from hospital to home, what can go wrong? Well, according to literature, many things go wrong. There could be a mission of information, miscommunication between providers when um, things or information just gets lost in translation or gets lost through the cracks, as Dr. Coleman put it. And uh, this results in inconsistencies, including inconsistencies in medication regimen, which uh, uh, clearly can become, um, um, her, uh, can cause harm or even death to the patient. Uh, there could be rush discharges. So um, in addition to research, I do, um, I teach, co-teach, and I really enjoy this role. And um, pay caregivers and patients are in a bit of a student role. And if they don't get clear information, discharges rushed, uh, they may not understand what happens later, for example, in a skilled nursing facility or home. So this, again, creates adverse events and human and system error. Care becomes fragmented, uh, so again, just different pieces fall apart and results in low patient satisfaction, which I think is in the best case scenario. In the worst, it could be a harmful um, adverse effects for the patient. And of course, costs on the healthcare system level, this results in costs. Not every readmission is a bad thing. Some readmissions uh, save lives, but um, if a readmission is unnecessary, it's avoidable, it creates costs, burden, and stress. According to one study out of Vanderbilt, when older adults transition from hospital to a skilled nursing facility, they have, on average, 14 medications. And out of 14, a third can worsen geriatric syndromes. So things like falls, urinary incontinence, malnutrition, dehydration, so issues I'm sure you are all dealing with on a daily basis. And some statistics, so uh, for example, according to a Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, in 2018, uh, a little under 4 million adult readmissions happened here in the U.S. And this is adult, not just 65 plus. The average, so that would translate into 14% readmission rate. It's higher, of course, for older adults. An average cost of um, over $15,000. And if you ask what causes those readmissions, what happens, um, interestingly, really, these are the things that brought the person into the hospital in the first place. So to put it plainly, things probably just did not get solved, did not get cured, did not get managed properly. So the person gets back to the hospital with the exact same problem that brought them in. And these are the top 10. They include septicemia, heart failure, diabetes, COPD and bronchiectasis, pneumonia, renal failure, spectrum of schizophrenia in, um, disorders and other psycho psychotic disorders, cardiac dys dysrhythmias, respiratory failure, and um, myocardial infarction. So the reason this whole topic became even a topic was that um, Healthcare researchers and clinicians uh, re recognize that it's a vulnerable period. Again, seems very simple, just going from point A 
to point B, but it's patient is really becoming vulnerable during that period. And it's associated with huge hospital expenditure on the order of billions of dollars every year. And so in 20, 12, under the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, a program was instituted by the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. It's called Hospital Readmission Reduction Program. And that program penalizes hospitals for certain, not all, just certain, unplanned readmissions for the following reasons listed. So heart failure, pneumonia, uh, MI, COPD, coronary artery uh, bypass graft surgery, and total hip or knee arthroplasty. So if the person gets readmitted with those, um, if they work hospitalized in the first place and they get readmitted of, for something that could have been prevented, the hospital is financially penalized. Um, and this contrasts, the, so this penalty contrasts with the uh, impetus on hospital to discharge patients, what, uh, as one author put it, quicker and sicker. Interestingly, hospital staff cannot possibly control all things that precipitate those readmissions. So um, on the next slide, I talk about those things. But often, it's not even the cl clinical condition. It's something that happens in the person's life. For example, they don't have transportation, somebody lives alone, um, just doesn't have money to, to buy the medications that were prescribed. Or again, to come back to education, they did not understand what they need to do. They were perhaps too embarrassed, didn't have time to ask. So again, things get lost through the, through the cracks. In my area is dementia. So I specifically work with people living with dementia. And in 2019, there was um, a systematic review on various factors of what causes people with dementia to get readmitted. So I specifically focused on this population just because I, I think it's uh, it's more challenging to manage their healthcare. And I grouped factors in non-modifiable and modifiable. And we can argue about some. For example, some factors can be less or more modifiable, but just for simplicity. So dementia, obviously, because that's the population I'm dealing with. But some other things, I didn't know, for example, that somebody being an immigrant, they are also more prone to be readmitted. Men, more than women, um, older age, obviously, comorbidities like heart failure. You saw in that slide that heart failure is number two uh, reason to be readmitted overall. Cancer, depression, um, index admission with things like pneumonia, UTI, seemingly so simple, fall-related fractures, um, poor functional status, and this is where I think it can be managed to an extent um, depend, like with things like nutrition and exercise, so it's partially modifiable. And just having more illnesses overall, just being sicker. And some modifiable factors include using antipsychotics, uh, balance disturbance and falls, frailty. Again, we can manage it some to, to an extent. Um, things that we sure can and should manage include uh, inadequate caregiver support and high caregiver stress. For people with dementia, symptoms like screaming and agitated behavior. Poor discharge planning, we clearly can manage that. And transfer to another hospital or nursing home. So healthcare, I'm writing a lot of grants these days. and. It's much easier to write um, simple, like for example, a person moving from hospital to home. This is not how it happens. For example, for people living with dementia, 75% go to a skilled nursing facility. So it just, it becomes, again, seemingly simple, but um, more complex if you look more in depth. So various trajectories and we need to account for them. And now I'll just go into more of actual models. Again, by no means I cover all of them. I'm sure you know of many other interventions, but I just covered the ones that I, I have been working with and reading about more in depth. So for example, TCM, transitional care model, uh, has been developed by Dr. Mary Naylor, who is a gerontological nurse scientist at the University of Pennsylvania, and her colleagues in medicine and health um, economy. So she and her colleagues have been focused on older adults, primarily or originally those with heart failure. Again, no surprise, you saw heart failure on the top of the list of readmissions. 